Hi guys, welcome back. I've got my cup of tea. You might need one as well, or maybe something stronger, because I've got a feeling this one might be a little bit of a long one. My daughter, who loves her gymnastics, has been on at me for a while. Dad, can we go out with a camera? I want to get some photos of me doing flips and spins and all the gymnastic goodness that she does. So I used my off-camera studio flash to try and get some more bespoke lighting, but I knew I was going to have to remove that light later in post-production, recombine it with a shot of her doing the flip, basically work a composite where I'm bringing in different elements from different photos into one finished image. I'm then going to go on a bit of a creative journey meandering my way through the fun tools of Luminar Neo and I want you guys to come along with me and hopefully we'll all learn something along the way and fingers crossed most importantly at the end of it we'll have a photo that my daughter is pleased with. So let's get into Luminar Neo. So after doing several shots with my daughter doing leaps, gymnastic moves, this type of stuff, this was the one that she particularly liked and wants to use and have put on her wall. However, as you can see, I was using a background light to illuminate her. This has given her a nice edge light, a rim light, so that she's separated from the background. However, I need to get rid of this light here and just leave her. I need to replace the background. So the easiest way to do that, if you're shooting on a tripod, is to get a completely blank frame. And like this one here, I actually moved the light behind the camera so you can see a bit more illumination here in the tree trunks and the leaves here and then I've gone further off into the distance and one here as well where I've got my daughter to actually take this shot for me and now I have these three plates here I can actually make a composite based on those three where I can then reintroduce her into that shot without this light we could start with this image and then bring this over the top here and then if there's any areas where I want to introduce a bit more light or prefer the direction of either of these I can do that so we're going to work from this file here introduce these as layers and then mask in the parts we want. So let's come up to edit and I'm going to come over to the plus icon on the left hand side that's going to allow me to add a new layer. So I'll click on the plus and I quite like the frame that the backlight is giving me in the one that's loading up here so I just need to click on this once and Luminar is going to load this in over the top of this existing frame. And there we go we can see half of both of the frames. Reason for that is we see the bottom frame at 100% and then 50% of the one we've just introduced over the top. So what I want to do is actually crank this all the way up to 100 I'm going to come into masking and grab myself a brush and now with the paint option rather than erase I just need to click once and that's going to just flip that mask around so I'll click there and all that's doing is activating the mask I'm making sure I've got a nice soft brush and now I'm going to push that strength up to around 50% I'm going to use my right bracket key to make the brush just a little bit bigger I'm going to click and I'm going to start painting and I'm just going to reintroduce the layer underneath and yes, you could do this with 100% flow just to get this done, or 100% strength, I should say, sorry. Um, so used to using other programs that use terminology such as flow. However, by doing it in uh, progressive passes at 50% or thereabouts, you can actually just build the effect up. And to see where we came from and where we've got to, we can just press the backslash key. That's our original. And then we've painted this over the top. So our original and the painted over the top. You can see not only have we got rid of the light and my daughter, yes we've reintroduced another problem that we need to deal with, however on the left hand side we're now actually illuminating this a little bit better and it's creating a really nice frame there. So now I just need to add one more layer that I can use to cover over me with the light. So I'm going to click the plus icon here, come to the plus again and now I can use this option here, front light fill, that's loaded into my thumbnail options here and I just click it once and Luminar is going to load that in again at 50% over the top of this. So I'm a bit of a ghost there in the background so we need to get rid of me completely but we just want to paint me out around here. We're happy with the rest of the frame. So I'm going to grab the opacity, push this all the way to 100 and there we go. I've gone but so is everything else that we've got nicely lit in the foreground. So now I just need the mask to cover over where I was standing. So I'm going to come into mask invert this mask so that we can see exactly what we're dealing with. Now we can come in with brush and I'm just going to paint over the top of me. That'll be the easiest way just to get rid of me. God, I bet my wife wishes it was that easy to get rid of me. <laughs> right, just for clarity, I am joking, of course. And that's just in case she's watching this. Okay, so you can see that I'm gone. However, if I hide this, you'll see that there's actually a difference in terms of contrast that we have here. 
Currently the background area that we've reintroduced is nowhere near as bleached out as what we had when we were using a light. And so because I'm wanting to create this illusion that we do have light bleeding through from the sun up above in the sky here, we would be getting some of that bleached effect in that background. So we need to fix that up. So I'm gonna come into the develop section and anything that I do here will only affect this layer. And so I'm gonna push this like really insanely high so you can see that it is just affecting that area where we've brought that layer in so what do we want to do just brighten things up maybe not quite that much and I'm only interested in brightening the top half I'm not too worried about this little area here so again we come in use our masking I could do a linear gradient or perhaps an easier way well e either or it's entirely up to you which way you decide to work I'm happy to use a nice big fat brush just paint over this to erase that effect from the bottom part of this another little painted pass there and we can see our before and after and we are predominantly brightening this area here. By combining these three layers I effectively have a background plate onto which to place my daughter doing her leap free from a light in the background. Perfect. But for the next part of the processing what I want to do is edit this as a whole rather than separate layers. You saw before how when I started moving the exposure slider it was just affecting the layer that we were on and we have three different layers. I need this all as one seamless unit, one image and currently there's no way for me to merge inside of Luminar Neo these all onto a brand new layer that combines all that information. However, what we're gonna do is a little workaround. We're just gonna export this photo as its own file. So I'm gonna call this Amelia Jump Background, save that in my temporary folder that I have set up for purposes such as this. We're gonna use a nice high quality file format, the TIFF, with 16 bits of data. So when we re-import this, any editing we do, Luminar Neo has all the information it needs to work with. So let's click export. And Luminar has now spat that file out that I can re-import into my catalog. So now I just need to come up and add photos. I'm just gonna add a single image, jump into my temp folder and grab the background file. And now we're going to reintroduce the layer that had Amelia jumping on. So I'm going to go to plus, grab that folder, double click on that photo, click it once over here. And there we go. That layer is dropped in again at 50% opacity, which is the default. So we'll push it all the way to 100. And now using the backslash key on my keyboard, I can toggle our before and after with her. So now all we need to do is basically cut her out and drop her onto this background. So let's do that. We need to come into the masking option and this is where portrait background removal is going to come in perfectly for us. It's analyzed the scene, the AI's obviously found the shape of my daughter, so I just need to click remove and hope that it does a pretty good job. And there we go, it's removed the background and left my daughter, so let's have a little look at before and after. There you go, so it's reintroducing her into that scene. However, there's definitely an inconsistency of contrast going on here. My daughter looks much more washed out than what we have in the foreground surrounding her. And that is because my powerful light was right in the frame of the camera and often you'll get a lot of light bleed from that and just lose contrast as a consequence of having a light in your shot. So now we need to up the level of contrast in the layer that holds my daughter so that, that layer matches those in the background. Let's do that. Let's jump into the develop section again. This is such a powerful tool. There's so many different approaches we could take and the easiest would be for me to grab the smart contrast slider and push that up and straight away if I toggle our eyeball tool you can see that we have a much better contrast value but even with smart contrast when you look around the front of her body here it still looks a little washed out where it was closest to the light in the frame and so this isn't quite enough so we might need to push this even further so I'm just going to leave that on her as an overall adjustment so I'll close that down when when I reopen the develop tool I can reapply the smart contrast if I want or what I may do this time is uh, not zoom in any further just grab the black slider and bring that down because that's obviously going to reintroduce black into those washed out areas through here. I can also come into the curves and just make a couple of tweaks there. If I brighten up the skin value, let's see what that does whilst we're still keeping a richness in those shadows. And whereas the last adjustment I made I wanted as a sort of global adjustment to her, this time what I'm going to do is just paint it in where I want it. So I'm going to come to the masking and again I'm going to go with the trusty brush option just so that I can paint this in where I want it. And currently we have zero softness so if I was to start painting now we'd have a hard edge which is not what we want. We always want to be working with a nice soft brush and I just click once and now I'm just going to start painting and release. 
And wherever I paint over, this is effectively painting in contrast because of those changes we made. I'm not gonna introduce more contrast into her face because that's pointed up towards the light source. I'm gonna keep that pretty bleached out. And I think what may work well is also just brightening up some of these leaves here just so that that better matches what's going on with her face. So let's do that. We need to jump back down to the layer that's underneath. And if I make just any old change here, you can see that we are affecting just that layer. And when I do shift the intensity of this quite heavily, you can actually start to see the flaws in the mask around my daughter. So I think what I'll do is actually just clean those up. So I'm gonna jump back to this layer here and I'm gonna go back into the overall masking where we did the portrait background removal. If I click remove, it's not gonna do any more calculations. It's already done it, but that will now allow me to reaccess the refinement brush. And I've done a whole video dedicated to how this tool works. So I won't go over it too much here, but at its most basic, the orange defines the person, the clear area defines the transition area, and you get to paint in what is background. So the closer you can take the background around the actual frame of her body, the edge of her body, the more that's going to get rid of that sort of soft fringing that we have going on. So there you go. So when I released that, you see it cleaned that foot up nicely. It's doing something strange around her leg just here. So the tighter you get the background to your subject, the more Luminar Neo is gonna clean these edges up. So the AI certainly gets us pretty close, but if we want a more accurate mask, it can certainly benefit us just to come in and give the AI a little helping hand. You guys get the idea, so I've just decided to speed through this bit of the video. Okay, that's a much tighter mask on her. It doesn't need to be perfect because for the most part, the background should match pretty closely what was already there. So I've deliberately sent the background nuclear at the moment just for the sake of actually seeing that difference between her cutout and the background. But now it's time to actually play with these sliders and try and get the two to work more seamlessly together. So what I want to do is actually just brighten up sort of this area here where I'm gonna fake a sun flare coming in. And so again, I'm just gonna stick with my brush at the moment. It's a nice tool to use. As long as I use a nice big brush, I can make things very, very seamless. You've got a nice amount of control and we'll keep the strength nice and low. And that way I'm able to build this up with subsequent passes. And I can just toggle between the base layer and the top layer that holds my daughter here and just flip flop between the two and keep adjusting them until I feel they work much better together. So I'm thinking that we need to brighten up just the face area here, not the rest of the body, but just where this light's bleeding through. So again, I'm gonna come into the masking section, grab my brush with a low strength. You get to see the pattern now, right guys? Click once, that's gonna hide the effect. And now as I paint this, it's just gonna to start to reintroduce it. At the end of the day, this is never gonna be a perfect composite because I'm not using natural light. I'm trying to fake what was there. And I introduced a portable studio strobe to kind of emulate light coming from behind. It's never gonna be perfect, but this is for my little girl for a wall. So we're not gonna stress about it too much. It's the principles that count. So let's have a little look at where we came from. So this was before with just the background and now we've reintroduced my daughter over the top. My daughter self-styled herself for this one. She chose her wardrobe and she went for this kind of garish pink leotard and it really doesn't go with what we've got around here. So let's see if we can't fix that up. I'm gonna zoom in here. We're gonna work on the layer of my daughter, obviously. And what we need to do is come in and address color. So let's select the color option. And I could come in and start sort of working on the magentas and the reds and trying to shift those around. But I think what I'm actually gonna do is do a complete hue shift so we can actually push this further into, let's say the greens, and then I'm just gonna mask it in only where I want it. One option I did think of was just going for more of a red so we could play off a complementary color scheme of green and red, but I think we're actually gonna go for a harmonious scheme, currently super saturated, so I'm just gonna sort of pull the vibrance back a wee bit and the saturation as well. And I want to mask that in, but currently I don't have that option right here. I'm not sure why, so I'm just gonna close that down. If I jump into my edits, now I do have the option for the masking. So again, I'm gonna come in with my trusty brush, come to paint so I can paint this effect in, and I think we'll go all the way for 100, make the brush nice and small using my bracket keys. And now I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in. I click once, and I can start painting.
my challenge whenever I do videos is to do all of my masking just with a mouse. Normally I'd be working with a Wacom tablet, but I know most of you don't actually own a Wacom tablet, and so I do it all with a mouse. Now here, you'll see I'm gonna go right over the edge, but obviously it doesn't matter because we've masked my daughter out and what's below or just off the edge of her chest over this side, that is the layer below. So any changes we're making here isn't gonna affect this area to the right anyway. Okay, that's pretty good. Maybe still just a little bit oversaturated, so I'll just jump in here and maybe just pull this down just a little bit. Now I'll probably leave the brightness of the leotard where it is, but just out of curiosity to see whether by darkening it or brightening it may just give us a little bit more separation between her and the background and whether we want to do that. So I'm gonna come into the luminance section in the HSL, so luminance just being another fancy word for brightness basically, and rather than what you would think, which is going in and changing the green value, we're actually needing to still talk into what Luminar knows this color to originally be, which is magenta. So if I grab the magenta, to slider and now bring that down now we can darken that off and by darkening it she certainly starts to pop against that background just a little bit more let's grab the reds and pull that down a little bit as well by doing that we're starting to keep that shadow just by her arm here you can see if I double click to reset it everything just goes a little bit flat on her torso so if I grab that we start to get a little bit more sort of three-dimensionality between that shadow on the left under the arm and this area here you know what let's go with that let's have a little look at our before very garish pink far too much and after we've tied it in now so we've got green with green now while we're on the topic of color, you'll see that around the edges of the frame, we've actually got some dead pine needles, some dead leaves, and I really love to turn those green because I don't know if you guys know this, but true fact, the tourism industry in New Zealand declares that any imagery that goes out shall not show any dead foliage whatsoever. Everything has to be vibrant and green, and that may not be 100% accurate. I may have just made that up. But anyway, we want to sort that out. And so how do we do that? I'm going to jump back into the tool section and we just need to speak into the oranges here and turn those greens. It's green. It's going to be really easy. So we just need to open up the color section here, come into the HSL section, which stands for the hue, saturation and luminance. And we want to talk into the hue, the color. We're actually going to shift the color, but just of the oranges. Whereas last time we grabbed the hue shift and we were changing it for the whole image on my daughter. This time we want to just speak into the oranges only. And as I started moving that, you'll see that there's a big problem to what I'm doing at the moment. We're actually working on the wrong layer. So I need to <laughs> come out of this. We need to come over to the bottom layer here and now come back into the color section. So open up color, hue, and now oranges. If I start moving those, there you go. You can see that we can either send them more ready orange or what we can do is push them more in towards the greens. I'm thinking if we grab the yellows as well, that is also gonna start to help those oranges ease more in towards a green. But as you can see, we're affecting the whole photo at the moment, which isn't what I want. So again, we're gonna use our trusty masks. And for some reason, my masks have disappeared. So no problem, I can just jump into edits, masking, and now I have access to my masks again. And this time we'll grab the brush. This time we'll grab the brush. We've grabbed the brush every time, Anthony. Anyway, I'm gonna grab the brush and just start painting over those areas. And you see when I released that, it corrected those oranges. So look, we can just quickly come over and paint over those. I don't wanna paint over the uh, tree trunks, obviously. They need to stay that color. But anywhere that we've got those dead branches and it just looks a little bit ugly, we don't want that. So I'm gonna go over all of those and just fix those up. And if it's just a little bit too much, like it is in the top left here, we can just flip over to the arrays and I don't wanna take it all away, so we'll just bring our strength somewhere around that sort of 30 mark, make a nice big brush and just do one sweep over there, maybe another click and we can just ease that effect back. Now one other issue I have with the colors is just how vibrant the greens are just down here on the bottom left hand side and around the floor on the bottom right as well. So I'm going to do a similar thing but this time we're going to desaturate the effect. So I'll come back into the color section here. I'm going to grab the greens and I don't want to change the hues of the green because that's obviously going to shift the whole color palette. What I want to do is come into the saturation and grab the green saturation 
and pull that out and you can see that we've made the greens pretty much monochromatic at this point. But just like when we were talking into the dead leaves, it wasn't all about the oranges, same thing with the leaves. It's all, all about the greens. A lot of it exists in the yellow channel as well. And so between the two of them, we're just going to sort of desaturate those, get them to a point where we like it, but obviously not around the whole picture. So we're going to come back in and mask that. And again, where have you gone masks? Why are you not in the tool section? It's been a long day. Maybe I'm missing something obvious there. But anyway, I'm just going to paint this effect in over these oversaturated or to my eye oversaturated greens just around the base here. So I'll just do a sweep there if I want to go again. There we go. We've just toned down that saturation. So here's our before. Here's our after. Everything's starting to look a little bit more harmonious now. So let's do an overall before and after of introducing my daughter and just fixing up that background a little bit. Now, one thing that will really help pull attention to my daughter doing her jump would be a darkening vignette, just darkening these edges off and helping to lead our eye to the center of the frame. However, I don't want to do it with the traditional vignette tool. And I'll show you why. If we crank that all the way to the left, you can see that we've applied the vignette all the way around the frame and that's great. However, with vignettes you don't have the option to mask it out. Um, hard to see at the moment because my masks have gone AWOL for everything but you don't. If I jump into the edit section which as you saw from the other ones I did have access to masking here you don't have that for vignetting and so that's not really the way I want to tackle darkening around the edges so let's just reset that and throw it in the bin so I'm going to come into tools and just like we've used before the trusty develop tool that's what we're going to use here and here we can drop the exposure down maybe drop the highlights down a wee bit and you can see as soon as we start making changes to the background plate particularly big changes like exposure or color balance things like that all of a sudden we're going to break that illusion of the composite the two elements suddenly look very separated so what are we going to do about that well of course we're going to come in and use a mask i'm going to use a radial gradient and i'm going to click around the center of my daughter here and pull that out from there now I'm going to jump back and this time I'm going to come into my brush. If we toggle our eye tool to see our before and after, you can see that we've definitely got that vignetting going on. But now we can take things a little bit more bespoke and we can just paint it in a little bit more where we want it. And so I'm going to introduce a little bit more darkness just on the floor here. Just go over some of the foliage just in the foreground as well. Maybe darken down that background there. And I want to erase it from the top part of the image. So I'm going to make my brush a bit bigger. Click once there, take that away from what is already dark up in the tree here. So we don't really want to push that too much darker and just toggle the before and after. You just see how that's just starting to lead our eye more into my daughter here. OK, I feel like we're at a point where we can bring in some sun rays. Let's do that. We'll close down develop and I'm going to scroll down to the creative section. And here we just want to select sun rays. And what I'm trying to do here is emulate sun rays coming down from the sun as if it were out of frame up way above my daughter here. And so we're going to grab the amount and just sort of push that up. So we've actually got something visual to work with. And now I'm going to grab the place sun center tool. And now I can actually just move the sun around. Ooh, there we go. Love doing that. But what I actually want to do is actually push it up away beyond the photo. Something like that for the position. But now I don't want the amount too strong because what I actually want to do is build this up with several instances of the sun rays filter. And I actually think that that's going to help us create a more layered look. So I want to keep the amount low. The overall look, I don't really want to sort of have this darkening effect of it like that. I just want to keep that all the way at 100 because if you see, if we push the amount to 100 and the overall look is also set to 100, all it's doing is actually just brightening. And that's kind of what I want from these sun rays. I don't want to add to the vignette darkening things down. So I'll keep that overall look at 100, amount down quite low, close it down. And now I've got the option to put a whole new sun in as well. So here we go. We've got another sun, but we want to make sure that it's coming from exactly the same place as the last one. So I'm going to bring that up here. Just a slight difference doesn't matter too much because as you move it left and right, you get just slightly different beams. And now we can play around with the number of sun rays if we want. So we can take the sun rays away. We can add some more in. You can just tweak the sliders until you get the look you're after. We want to make sure that overall look is not darkening these, those edges. So again, we're just brightening things up. Look how much this is, 100% way too much. But look, we can just come back and just sort of start to ease this in. And it's not only the slider that's going to help bring this in, but we can control it further again with our mask. And that's exactly what I'm going to do by jumping into the edits, come to masking, and I'm going to grab the brush. 
surprise, surprise, the trusty brush again. Let's work with a strength around 50%. I'm gonna click and all of those rays just disappear. And now it's a case of wherever I paint, they're gonna be reintroduced with 50%. I don't wanna brighten the very top part here too much because I don't wanna overexpose that. And if you wanna tweak things, you can just jump back into the adjustments. And I might wanna just play with the ray settings, just see if I'm happy with what we're creating here. You've always got the option of grabbing randomize and playing with that too. And we may just be overcooking things a little bit. So let's just bring the amount down slightly. And now already I'm feeling like because we're bringing up the exposure value, the brightness of the background, it's starting to make my daughter look not so convincing in this environment. So I wanna jump back to that layer and just play around, see if we can't brighten her up a little bit and just get that believability going again. So let's jump into the tool section, scroll up here, develop. This is a lot of back and forth in this video. What I might do is just bring the shadows down for a little bit more contrast again, but now come into the curve section and just bring up a little bit of brightness on her. Let's see if we can't just tweak this curve and get this looking kind of how I want it. In spite of all these changes, I'm not really buying into this at the moment. And like I said at the beginning, I'm not super stressed about that because I'm just trying to create a nice piece of artwork for my daughter for her wall. But I still want to honor the sense of authenticity of the scene because she genuinely was doing this jump. And it's actually me with my artificial lighting that's kind of messing this up. So I need to fix that. And I feel like perhaps one of the things that's not quite right with this at the moment is that she's perhaps oversaturated just ever so slightly. So let's jump into the color section again. And you guys might have noticed we've pretty much only been using two tools, right? We've been using the develop tool and the color tool, but already we've been able to make quite a few changes. And I think the green is actually oversaturated, so we're just gonna sort of bring that down a wee bit as well. Okay, that's good enough for what I'm after. So now for the next step, what I want to do is again, edit this as one unit, one photo. So I'm gonna do the same thing we did last time, which was export this as a TIFF. So I'm going to right click, come to export. The settings are all the same as last time. I'm just gonna call it Amelia Jump Composite or composite, I got told off for calling it composite the other day. I've lived all over the world and my accent doesn't know where it's from anymore. Please forgive me. Okay, so now we can bring that exported photo back into Luminar Neo, start doing all of our creative edits on that, and that acts as a single entity now, not separate layers anymore. So that's exactly what we want for this next step. Let's do that. Now we're gonna jump back to the catalog. We're gonna add photo, add image. We're in the temp folder open this back up and come into edit and now we can edit the photo as a whole you can see that we don't have those additional layers now if i make any changes it's going to speak to the whole image and that's going to help to give us some buy-in to the believability because any changes we make it's done universally so what's the next step well i actually want to carry on adding in the sun rays and you might think well why you're already doing that in the background but i actually wanted to do this in a layered approach so we'll have some in the background and some coming further forward in the foreground. Sun rays aren't two dimensional, they're 3D. So by adding another sun rays effect that may actually go over my daughter in some instances, then that may actually help again to sort of cement her into the scene with the sun rays. So let's come to sun rays, place sun center. Actually, I'm gonna grab the amount first. We wanna make sure that that's nice and high so that we can see what we're doing. And we're gonna bring this up here. And the previous position was somewhere around that sort of catalog up there. And if we put that just kind of there, that's pretty good. And already you can see, whereas last time we were just affecting the background plate, now those rays of light are actually spilling over my daughter. So that's kind of what we want. We're still gonna refine this, make it look a little better. And again, I may even add two of these. So let's let's just do one of these as a Kickstarter, not go too heavy handed with it. Again, do we wanna push that overall look so we darken the edges or do we wanna brighten it or keep it as bright as it should be? Let's keep it bright. We can play with the sun rays length as well. Like how far do we want that to spill down? That's pretty good where it is. And how about we come down here into the warmth section and actually make sure that the sun rays are warm. You can see if I push this all the way to the right, they start to get a more yellow hue to them. And we want our sun rays to be warm, right? So let's just introduce a little bit more warmth. Close this down, that will move into the edit section. And we're gonna add one more of those. So again, come in here. Atmosphere, no, not atmosphere AI, sun rays, sorry. Grab the amount, crank the amount up, and let's position it where it needs to be. So we're gonna place sun center, grab the little icon there, the little dot, and move this up. And we can just gently rock that left and right and move it into a place where we feel happy with it. 
And this time I'm going to come down to randomize and actually start playing with this randomize slider until the rays sort of look like a distribution that I'll be happy to work with. This looks pretty good because I don't actually want a ray straight over her face, but I may want it sort of cast over her body, over her hand here. So we'll work with that. I'm going to crank the overall look up again because I don't want that darkening effect around the edge. And we're just going to bring the amount all the way back down and just start to ease it in. Something quite high this time, and rather than the last time where I left it as it was, this time we're actually going to come in and use our trusty mask with a brush. I'm going to drop the strength down, and now, keeping my strokes pretty straight, I'm going to start to introduce some of these rays. I think there was a nice one sort of spilling off over to the left hand side here, so I'll make sure we reintroduce that and potentially some coming through in the background again. Spilling over the foreground, and I'll make the brush a bit bigger, even introduce more strength, and then if any of those rays were sort of making it just a little bit further here, we'll introduce them into the foreground element as well. Now this may just be a little bit overkill, so I'm just gonna come in, drop the strength to about a third, and just sort of remove it again from a few of those areas. It's very easy to get carried away with these sun rays. I'm gonna do the same with this. I'm gonna come in with my masking here, but first of all, I just wanna have a little toggle before and after and just get a feel for what was being introduced and maybe just remove some of that from my daughter. So I'm just gonna use the arrays version this time on 30% and just remove some from my daughter there. Okay, let's carry on with the fun part. Let's get into the creative edit. Now, the only way the photons of sun rays are visible is when they pass through atmosphere. And so why don't we add some atmosphere into our photo? We have the perfect tool, Atmosphere AI. Let's crank the amount to 100. I don't wanna be putting it up high, I'm thinking low level. So we could go for like the layered fog or haze. Haze could be quite a good one. And now let's grab the depth slider, increase that. And now you can see that we have a kind of foggy haze hanging around. I think it's just a little bit too light. And so I'm just gonna ease the lightness back. Let's put that somewhere around there. And just like last time, we're gonna paint a mask in. So I'm gonna come into the masking section. I'm gonna click once and I'm just gonna paint right to left, reduce the size of the brush, paint a little more in, and I'll do a few more dabs off into the background and that will give the impression that there's more of it just hanging around in that path in the background. Jump back into the adjustments and we had our amount at 100. We don't need it that high, but it's always good to set it nice and high so that when you're painting it in and making adjustments, you can see exactly what it's doing. And now we can just sort of tease this in, I don't know, around half of it, 50%, that's great. Let's press on. I'm gonna jump into my tools again, and this time I think I'm gonna do a little bit of dodging and burning. You guys watched me do some dodging and burning on a portrait the other day, and I said, let me know if you want me to do some on a landscape photo. Sure, this isn't a landscape, but it'll give you an idea anyway. So we can just make our adjustment, so we're effectively burning this down, we're making it darker, and now all I need to do is mask it in. So I'm gonna come into my brush, grab the paint tool and we'll go with about 30%, that's all good. And the first thing I'm gonna do is put a little kind of faux shadow on the floor here. Just by darkening the floor up, it might just help to kind of give the idea that there's a shadow being cast of my daughter. I know we've got the look of a hard light around her, so it'd be a very hard defined shadow, but look, it's just a kind of hint at this point. If I make my brush a bit bigger, I can just quickly come in and do a little bit more painting around the edges as well. The more we darken those edges, the more our eye is gonna to come to this center area of the frame. I'm gonna close this down, open another one. This time I might wanna brighten things up just on the edge of this uh, tree here. I'm feeling like it's just getting a little bit dark. So I'm literally just freestyling at the moment. I'm trying to chat to you guys about what I'm doing at the same time as doing it. So I'm in two different headspaces, a sort of creative headspace and a verbal vocabulary headspace. Very hard to do. Right, let's see how before and after, just adding more light up at that top part. Okay, we've definitely brightened a lot up. What I might want to do now is just add some overall contrast. Before when I actually dropped the exposure, I, th I think I preferred it just a little bit darker. So we'll kick things off with a reduction of exposure there, but I also want to come in and just play with curves. Curves certainly gives you a lot more control over the look of the contrast in your image. Okay, I'm feeling like this center part is just a little bit too bathed in light. It's a little too bright. So again, I can just open up a new develop tool and just reduce the exposure down. Now I'm just gonna paint this in through this area here. So we'll just drop that down, bring the highlights down a little bit and come into masking, brush, 
click and just paint where I want to darken down. So I'm just going to darken this bit, maybe even darken the, the back of my daughter's hair here because I just feel like she's looking a little flat. We've almost lost three-dimensional form there. So we'll just darken that as if it's a shadow. Could run a little darken line down on the shoe there as well. And then just come back to adjustments and just make sure that we haven't gone too far with that. Maybe just ease it back just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do a before and after because that's always a really good idea. But I'm actually a little bit scared at the moment because I think I may be overcooking this. So <laughs> let's see our before and our after, before and after. It's okay in terms of this kind of magical princess leaping through the air and the forest vibe that she's after. I think it's okay. Look, I'm going to press on. Let's keep going. Let's... Uh, Let's push this even further. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going too far with this, but <laughs> we'll just, in for a penny, in for a pound, we'll just keep going. Right, I'm gonna mask this in up around the top and brighten this area even more. Just remove it a little bit from there. It's all just a little bit back and forth, playing around at the moment. And that's one of the reasons I really love using Luminar Neo is because it's just so much fun to play around with. I really feel like I want to add another beam of light that actually goes over the top of her body from the background. So I'm going to do that. Let's jump into sun rays again, push the amount up so we can see what we're doing, place the sun center and move it up here. Now, guys, this may be getting just a little bit repetitive. I get that. But this is the process that I go through when I'm working on more creative pieces, things that are for me, not for a client. And I just get lost in the mojo, like just going with it. This is how I work. I'm just continually playing. And we're currently up to nine edits. That's not uncommon for me to have very high numbers of edits on the go. I just keep going until I get the look that I want. And so in this case, I'm not worried about all the other beams. All I want is something sort of just coming over her body here. So I'm going to grab the paintbrush grab the strength and just do a streak straight down. Let's have a little look at our before and after. There you go. So we now have a beam of light that is actually breaking over the top of her body. Um, I wonder if we could do one over the back of her shoe. There you go. What about uh, increasing the intensity of that one? What we can do is sort of build it up and then if it's too much, just knock it back. So we can grab the erase tool now and just drop the strength down a nice big fat soft brush to work with is preferable and we just sort of tease this back just so it's not so evident i do like the idea of the actual sun ray to be a bit warmer though so let's come back into that warmth grab the sun ray warmth and just tease this back and forth until we just give it a little bit of life maybe that's just a little bit too much we could play with a number of rays as well just to sort of put that uh, in a place that we're happy with okay finishing touches let's come back into the tools and we'll pop down to the creative section and some of my favorite things to do is just to apply some color grading and what i would like to do is actually warm up this whole brighter area here and a good way to do that is to jump into the toning section where we can talk directly into the color of the highlights and the shadows so in this case we'll click on the highlights i'm going to crank the saturation up and you can see exactly what color we're introducing here a big bright red that's no good i want to go for more of a yellowy warm hue so i can just play with this until i get it to the point i want it and that looks quite nice. And now I can just ease the saturation back and just toggle it until I'm like, yeah, I'm happy with that. After all, this is sunlight, guys. We want her to be bathed in warm light. Okay, let's close that down. What else could we do for color grading? Well, I really like to jump into the mood section often and just play around with the LUTs and see what we can do. So I happen to know that Long Beach will give us a nice, rich warmth to it. And if you're ever unsure exactly what kind of color grading the particular mood that you're applying is doing, just crank the amount all the way to 100. By all means, you're not going to leave it at 100, but you can then go through and you can see exactly what effect is going on. You can see that Palm Springs is just sending all a bit nuclear. We don't want that. But you can see just how much brightness and yellows that Riverside is bringing into the highlights and more of a kind of dark green into the shadows with a kind of orange in those mid-tones. It's much easier to see when you set it at 100. I actually like the look of Long Beach in this one. We've got that nice, beautiful warmth, and then we're really dropping off into a deep contrast there. And so I'm just gonna play with this until I get that to a point I like it. Color grading is normally the last thing I do, but I have forgotten to apply one of the tools I really like to use, and that is Mystical. And that is gonna come in really handy for this particular type of photo, because it does have this ethereal, dreamlike quality to it. And so let's crank some Mystical in there and see what we think. Yeah, okay, I'm happy to go with that. 
if we feel like the blacks are just getting a little too rich on us, which I think they are in this particular case, although I do like the contrast, one way to keep the best of both worlds is to come into the curve section. Here we can just grab this bottom point that represents the black point, and as we move that around, we can brighten the black point, or we can crush it down even further. And what I'm gonna do here is just lift this up ever so slightly, so we're lifting the blacks, lifting those shadows up, so we've still got the same sort of level of contrast, but with a slightly brighter black point. When I'm working on these type of photos that have more of a kind of fantasy quality, I think of film, I think of movies that I love, and movies are very rarely overly saturated. They often have beautiful colors, but often the colors are just a little bit muted, and that is exactly what I'm gonna do here. Just plan a little bit of subtlety here, at least where the palette's concerned, because by no means is this photo or this edit subtle. It's very in your face, isn't it? So look, this is our bright, colorful version, and that's just with the saturation just drop just a little bit. I do like the rich depth of the shadows that we have here. However, I do feel like we've lost quite a bit of detail. So I wonder if we can bring that back some way. Uh, let's have a look at super contrast and just see whether by playing with the shadow contrast, I can't just reintroduce some of that detail. And absolutely, we're starting to do that, but I'm washing out the whole photo. I'm losing contrast in the overall photo. I don't want to do that. So again, let's come in and we'll grab a mask. And I just want to paint this in just into those shadow areas. So let's go for a strength of around 50. 50%, smash our brush up to this sort of size and just come in around the side in that little pocket there. Maybe go for another swash through there. Yeah, maybe just down this side here. All right, let's toggle our before and our after, before and after, just a little bit more visual interest in those shadows. And I think that, my friends, is where we'll call it done. So we started out with an artificially lit shot of my daughter doing a leap in this forest scene. I then created a background plate by merging a couple of photos where I moved further back with the light and then combined those with one where I could actually remove myself from that background. We then used Luminar Neo's background removal tool to reintroduce my daughter back into that scene but without the light behind her. And from there we started to craft the finished look the way we wanted it by introducing those sun rays, by changing the colours to a more harmonious palette and then I went even further still by adding yet more colour grading to the photo. Truth be told, I probably should have stopped somewhere in between these two images. However, this isn't for a high-end client's ad campaign. My client is my daughter, and I'm pretty sure she's going to be happy with the result. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video. There's one popping up on screen, so go ahead and click that. And if you haven't subscribed already, I've got that big subscribe button right there on the screen right now. So go ahead and click that, and I'll see you in future videos.